In this video, I'm going to share my initial impressions on the Fuji X-T30 camera. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video, I'm going to talk about this Fuji X-T30 that I bought for myself not so long ago. I saw this uh, used camera at the local camera store and I got a good deal and I didn't have to spend a fortune. This is not my first Fuji. I have owned Fuji cameras before, but that is a long time ago and I haven't used any Fuji cameras for a long time. But after my X-T4 experience, my Fuji X-T4 videos up here, by the way, take a look if you're interested. After that experience, I really wanted to have uh, a Fuji camera again. And uh, luckily I found this for a good price. But unfortunately, I haven't been able to use this camera as much as I wanted to because I don't own a proper general purpose lens for this camera yet. This camera came with the kit zoom 15-45, to but that lens turned out to be such a bad lens that I had to return it. Maybe I got a bad copy or something. I saw some favorable reviews online, but my copy was <laughs> such a bad lens. Um, it was not pro properly sharp anywhere at any focal length and um, I really didn't like that lens. I don't usually dislike <laughs> zoom lenses that much. I, I think some of them are really okay lenses, but that lens was such a bad lens that I really had to uh, return it. I do have this Samyang 12mm f2, which I'm going to review, but this is a little bit too wide for me as a general purpose lens. Right now I have the Sigma 30mm f1.4 on the Fuji and uh, this is on loan from Sigma Nordic. They were so kind uh, to let me borrow this lens a little bit longer after my review and I'm going to buy this lens uh, for myself to be used on this Fuji camera. But having said that, I have been able to use this camera enough to share my first impressions. And first of all, this camera is really, really small and lightweight. It's the same size as many micro four thirds cameras, but there's of course a bigger APS-C sensor inside here. And also there are so many features on this camera that it's almost incredible for this price. Of course, this X-T30 is not uh, available anymore. I think so as new or there might be, you may be able to find it new, but I think it's been replaced by the Mark II version, but the Mark II only has a different uh, screen or something, but I think the basic camera is still the same. But it has incredible amount of features and the video features are really, really great. And <laughs> this camera has totally separate settings for video and uh, photo, which is really important and I think it's unique in this uh, price range or this for this price. There are so many more expensive cameras like my Sony a7C that I'm using to film this. It doesn't have separate settings for video and photo and it's a little bit of a, a mess when you switch between photo and video. You have to remember to switch many settings and um, it, you, it's easy to forget to change some of the settings and then you may, you know, uh, ruin some of your photos or videos. But this tiny little Fuji, when you turn uh, on the video mode, you have all your video settings. And when you turn back the photo mode, you have all your photo settings. And uh, I think it's really, really great. The only major downside feature-wise is the lack of IBIS. I also like the ergonomics. Um, Mostly the Fuji trademark retro dials, they look and feel really good and you can see your shutter speed and uh, most of the settings without turning on the camera. The only thing that I don't like is the quick menu button which is here on the thumb rest. The thumb rest itself is great, but the, it's way too easy to accidentally hit the 
Q button and it's really sometimes annoying when you start to take a picture and all you can see is the quick menu. And also I don't like these command dials because they have double function. You can press them for a, a secondary function, but the press function makes them feel spongy and not uh, really uh, like a high quality at all. Not a big deal, but um, I just don't like them very much. Also, there's no uh, dial here on the back. There's only a joystick and that I like. You can use the joystick to move the autofocus point and navigate the menus. And even though the joystick is really, really small, it's still very uh, pleasurable, pleasant to use. And it has a very nice uh, tactile feel to it. The viewfinder is not the best, but it's good enough, especially for this price. The back screen is also good enough for this price. The screen only goes like this up and down. It's not fully articulated, flippy screen. For photography, this design is, is really good. I like it, but because this camera has so good video features and so many video features, I would sometimes like to use this to film myself and I would really like to have a fully articulated um, flippy screen on this camera for that so I could see myself when I'm filming myself. Let me also remind you of the workshop that I'm organizing with my friend Peter Fosgord here in Helsinki in August 2022. We still have some open spots there. Please check out the link down below. It's going to be one week of photography goodness and by the end of the workshop you're going to be a better photographer and a better storyteller. Check out the link. It would be so nice to see you here in Helsinki in August 2022. I almost forgot there is one more really super annoying thing feature on this camera and it is the tripod uh, thread which is right by the battery door and if there is a, a tripod uh, quick release plate on the camera you can't remove the battery or the, or the memory card and it's the same thing of course if the camera is on the tripod so um, I really have to get a customized, uh, some sort of customized uh, uh, quick release plate or something for the camera because it is really super, super annoying uh, to remove the uh, quick release plate every time I need to replace the card or the battery. So that is a big, big mistake. I wonder why they couldn't uh, put the thread somewhere else. The autofocus is really super good. I was really surprised how good it is. It works really well for video and it's awesome for photography. For video, it's not quite as good as uh, Sony autofocus, but it's really, really very good still. And uh, I was really surprised how good the autofocus is on these Fuji cameras and even on this uh, cheapo Fuji. Fuji image quality is of course well known and uh, if you like JPEGs, Fuji is probably the best camera for JPEG shooter because Fuji JPEGs simply look amazing. The sensor is the same 26 megapixel sensor as on every current Fuji camera and I really like the results I get from this camera. The only Downside is, like I said before, uh, the lack of IBIS. For me, it's not a deal breaker, but it's a downside. But when I bought this camera, I really didn't know what I was buying. I thought I'm going to get uh, some sort of uh, like a beginner's model, but this camera is fully loaded with uh, all kinds of features that you can usually find uh, on more expensive cameras and uh, based on my experience so far with the Fuji X-T30 I can really from the bottom of my heart I can recommend this camera for anyone looking for their maybe their first system camera or someone who wants to transfer from DSLR to mirrorless this also would be a great uh, first mirrorless camera 
and I don't think you are going to run out of camera with this even when you get more experienced. This has so many features and uh, such a great image quality and everything that is going to serve you a long time. And I'm really, really happy that I bought this camera, um, even though I thought I was going to buy just a, an affordable beginner's camera, but it, it turns out this is so much more. I hope you enjoyed this uh, first impressions video and if you enjoyed please consider buy me a cup of coffee too there's a link down below but only if you don't live in Finland thank you so much i'll see you in the next video